and just go straight into scale mode and just scale this loop out a bit. Now what we're aiming to do here is to line this up with this kind of curve here so when we look at our pictures of our car you can see, see here where this is now much more of a gradual kind of step out but that's what we're doing now. Okay, so that's not a bad start. Let's also pull this in on this view here. So I know that's not right on all the edges, so actually what I might do is just take off these bottom two edges, pull that in a touch, take those off. And this still isn't right, but it's much more like accurate than accurate place to start than what it was before. Okay, so something like that. So if we look at that in perspective view, you can see it's not a bad, not a bad start. Uh, one other thing we might want to do is just set the normals on there, so the stuff on those, that edge. Maybe if we just harden this one though. So when we turn off our uh, preview, um, our wireframe preview. You can see we're already starting to get that kind of nice wheel out shape. Um, the shape isn't right at the bottom down here, but uh, it will be later, so it's just something we need to tweak. Okay, so the next thing we want to do though is start extruding out for this bonnet. So obviously, you can use your uh, plan here to see where the bonnet like extrusion actually starts from. So it kind of I'm going to start it kind of roughly from this one here where that line is. Um, maybe down to say this point here or this point here. There's something I might want to do is just tweak these kind of points down a little bit here. Probably best to again use our translucency. To kind of roughly get that shape right. See I know we started off with a nice kind of smooth perfect circle but <laughs> unfortunately you are going to have to edit it at some point down the line. So start with something like this, again extrude edge and pull that out. And our first line actually came up to kind of around around where this little line is here. So a slightly awkward one, but we can at least we've got a nice line on our plan. And I might have done that slightly wrong, but I'm really not that bothered yet, because we can always tweak that topology afterwards anyway. Okay, so once you've got it lined up in this view, obviously what you want to do is get this lined up in some of your other views here. Now I'm using my front view here, but obviously we do also have our, our top view. 
and it's worth checking that one too. I tend to rather go off the top view than the than the front view anyway in terms of the final final positioning. Let's just go to our top view now and just check that line. The reason I'd rather go off the top view is because you've got a lot more information in your top view relative to the front view. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. So the next thing we want to do is just select this loop again. Again, extrude that out. Go straight into move mode. And we'll get this positioned on here. This time we're pulling back, so I'm just going to mainly use my top view now rather than the front view we were using before. We'll get this nicely lined up with this line. So based on where I've got my door here, I might find I pull that line back somewhat. So even though we set everything up before, everything can always be edited later, especially when you start adding in um, kind of more detail. So really I think we are going to need another point in here where this kind of comes up to here. So what we could do is drag this one back, drag this one back, put this one up here, like so, and then do another kind of extrusion out. So you see here we'll have another kind of loop kind of running down here. quite tempting just to rush off and add in more detail but I'd suggest just make sure that everything is in the right place first before you do that. So again extrude edge, drag this back, maybe drag it down like this, go into vertex mode So make sure you, because um, we are modelling quite a large section of the vehicle here, so make sure you are checking your reference constantly to see what that's actually doing. So you can see here we've got, um, comes across truck quite straight, but a diagonal line down here. So you can see our diagonal line there. Um, and then it ramps up a bit, so that's why we have these kind of two lines here. And then it just comes across kind of quite a straight kind of gradient. So what we might want to do here is just a slight readjustment of where our topology is. Looks like we're definitely going to need another another point in there for that. So kind of another loop that works its way around here. Um, so you might want to if we're going to add that in, let's quickly kind of pull 
these ones down. Jump into edge mode, insert edge loop tool, and add a loop in here. Remember to round those off first. Remember you can use free on your keyboard just to check how the roundness of that is looking when it's smooth. So you can see we've got some slight kind of discrepancies with the uh, with the old plan here. Um, so what we could also do is add another line in here. So you know, just go to insert edge loop tool and drop a line in here like so. So we are going to need that anyway, just to define that curvature on the top of the bonnet. actually just select all of those verts. Remember another useful little shortcut by the way is if you just use your arrow keys you can cycle up and down the vertices that you're selecting. Okay, so once you're happy with that, we'll select this loop along here and extrude that edge again and we'll ramp that up and pull that across. And go into vertex mode. Remember you can use the F key, so it's F9 to go into vertex mode. And get these lined up on here. So let's just check what that actually um, what that bit actually does. Can't really tell from that view. Yeah, so we can see here it kind of has a slight a harsher, like wider edge on it here compared to the back here. So it might be that this comes in a little bit. Let's like say. So. So it kind of comes down. So once you're roughly happy with that, you can go to edge mode again and extrude that out. And we'll just bring this kind of roughly into the um, into the center now. Remember you can use scale to get this kind of nice and straight.
and uh, it'd be good at this point to have a look at this in actual um, 3D. Okay, so one thing to remember here is we wanted this edge nicely um, actually hardened. And we might want these two hardened as well. Okay, we can see we're starting to get somewhere with this now. We can see we're starting to get that shape of the wheel arch in there, got the top of the bonnet in there, and got the side panel in as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just make sure that these bits kind of meet nicely. Now, when you're modelling a car for games, a couple of important things to consider are kind of damage models. Um, so, if the car is going to be able to split up into panels, like the doors are going to be able to open and stuff like that, you want to make sure that these are split into actual kind of different panels. So, you need the topology in there to do that. So, like where the door is actually attached here. Eventually, you might say select this and extract the faces off this. And if we just go to vertex mode, you might pull those slightly that way, like that. So you can see our door is actually going to be a separate, separate model. So um, it's important to consider that whether you're going to do that or not. And I would advise doing that. Because it also gives you the option of, we just stick that there. Um, also gives you the option of, obviously, having animation on this, so the door can actually open, and so on. Um, but what you can do is model it as one big chunk, and then as long as you've got the loops in there, you can always separate that off afterwards anyway. Okay, so to do this, what we're going to do is just. Um, first of all, get these kind of roughly lined up with our, our door. So remember we spoke about, we added in this extra loop here. I might do is just recombine those again. And uh, if we look on our... plan here, you'll see we've got this indent here where this kind of row um, stretches along here. So I want to pull that in a little bit like so. And this looks like it's quite a uh, nice kind of smooth transition. So you can see this, it might curve in slightly before it sticks out. So at the moment our side isn't really representing that. So we might want to just quickly jump into vertex mode. If you use control and shift by the way it won't deselect the verts. You just hold down control and shift when you're doing that. And if you hold down control that will take them off. And shift takes off ones that are selected and adds on ones that aren't. So, like that. Okay, so that might not be too bad. And you might look at this though and think, you know, that might come further back a little bit more, but we can always tweak that, tweak that again later. Um, so let's use our uh, left view here, and we'll go to vertex mode and just select these end ones here. And maybe we'll pull those back a little bit. Because I'm happy with kind of roughly where those are, let's just check our front view and make sure they're right in there. So they need to come down slightly, so we'll pull those down. 
and maybe we'll just make sure they're nice and straight as well. So now that we've done that, we can just select this vert here, and I'm just going to actually just snap that not straight onto there. I use V and just select this axis and just snap it onto there. So now we know both of those are sitting flush. Basically, we're going to have a whole other loop coming down here. So we could probably I'm just going to put my from view in here. Now we want to leave that where it is actually for now. Maybe if we select this loop here, and we'll just pull these back a bit. So there's going to be a bit more kind of space in there for that loop to run down. So let's turn on our translucency as well. And get this to be a nice kind of flat edge. So you see here what we are going to need is another point kind of running up here to make that. Okay, so depending on which edges you're happy with, you might want to sit that flush to there and maybe pull it back a little bit. And just check where these ones are sitting as well. I'll tell you what, let's put the geometry in and then we can fix that afterwards. So if we just select up to say there, and then extrude that edge out, go straight to move mode and just pull this out. And if we go straight to vertex mode, hold down V and just snap this onto its kind of corresponding vert. We can see we've got a fair bit of tweaking to do on that. Obviously one other thing we also need to do is just drop in another edge loop there. Snap that onto there. So that's the first thing we're going to do, we're going to come in and just reposition where this is. Okay, so what we need to do now is just position where we want all these verts to go. So you can see based on our reference images how that bit kind of actually works. So you can see the way the gradient actually kind of comes in a little bit. So you see the way it's quite deep there, it comes in a little bit and then kind of extrudes out from there. So that's what we want to represent with this. So what I might do actually is just like this and just harden that edge. And later on we'll really use that kind of isolate, isolate selected mode in order to get this kind of spot on. So there is a lot of like little vertex tweaks that are going to happen, that are going to happen here now.
And you can see we're starting to get that kind of edge in there now. Might want to just soften these ones off. So yeah, that's not looking too bad. Okay, so what you want to do then is just carry on kind of modeling in some more of the elements in this in this way. So where I've kind of split this off here, you might just want to stick these back together just for kind of ease of uh, of modeling. Like I said, you can do all that, that kind of split later on. So it might not have entirely welded those. So it's just a look to two. Hit apply. There we go, that's now fine. And we can soften that edge off. So like I say, the like in this kind of version, we for the game res model you might find that you don't um, smooth this off, so you might not need smoothing lines but um, you might do. So um, it kind of depends how high poly you want to have the kind of end result. Um, and if you're not going to use subdivisions, then you want to make a lot more kind of use of your kind of smoothing groups and obviously your normal map. So um, yeah, but for now I kind of tend to work like that using my harden and soften edges just to see how stuff's looking. Obviously this needs a little bit of kind of tweaking around here, getting that shape right. And you will find you do a lot of tweaking just like moving little vertices around and stuff like that. Just to get the shape exactly right. Um, and obviously good planning really helps. Like if you can go in and model it in this kind of way so obviously one addition we made here was kind of this loop working its way up there. So um, if you can really go in and spend time actually getting this right, I should have spent more time at this phase, like making sure this element is definitely kind of working okay. Like obviously for this line of the door we're going to need one in as well. So um, if you can do that then that will really, really kind of help your, your vehicle modeling.